Hello. The Texas Department of Transportation, Houston District, would like to welcome you to this virtual public meeting with an in-person open house for the proposed Farm to Market, or FM 521, widening project. This is a pre-recorded presentation. My name is Peter, and I am part of the project team. I would like to thank you for participating in this public meeting. During this virtual presentation, you may pause the video and navigate forward or backward using your video player. If you have any technical difficulties accessing the public meeting information, need special accommodations, or have interpretation needs for a language other than English or Spanish, please contact Jason Holloman at 713-802-5137. Details on how to submit comments will be provided later in the presentation. This virtual public meeting is being held in conjunction with an in-person open house. The open house will be held on Thursday, May 25, 2023, from 5 to 7.30 p.m. at the Oaks at Oak Plantation, located at 19706 FM 521 Road, Rocheron, Texas, 77583. The information presented in the virtual public meeting and the in-person option is identical, and opportunities to comment do not differ. The purpose of this public meeting is to engage with stakeholders and the adjacent communities regarding the proposed project and to receive feedback. It also offers an opportunity for the project team to address any questions or concerns from the public. The Texas Department of Transportation, or TxDOT, commits to purposefully involve the public in planning and project implementation by providing early, continuous, transparent, and effective access to information and decision-making processes. This project is anticipated to receive federal funds, and because of the federal component, TxDOT is required to assess the potential environmental effects of the proposed project in accordance with federal standards. The process that is followed is called the National Environmental Policy Act, otherwise known as NEPA. The NEPA process provides analyses of the potential impacts to the natural and man-made environment and helps the decision maker to make an informed decision on whether or not to proceed with the project. On December 9, 2019, TxDOT received a signed Memorandum of Understanding from the Federal Highway Administration that permits TxDOT to assume responsibility from the Federal Highway Administration for reviewing and approving certain assigned NEPA projects. This review and approval process applies to this project. In this presentation, I will first outline the notification process leading up to this public meeting. Then, I will provide an overview of the project, discuss background information, and explain the need for and the purpose of the project. This will be followed by a detailed discussion of the proposed improvements and the environmental analysis. Next steps and funding information will be provided following the engineering and environmental discussion. Toward the end of the presentation, there are instructions on how to submit written comments as well as contact information for TxDOT. In preparation for this public meeting, notices in both English and Spanish were published on the TxDOT webpage on April 27, 2023. Links to the meeting notice were posted on the TxDOT Facebook page and the TxDOT Houston District Twitter page. Elected officials were notified of this public meeting by mail and email on April 28, 2023. Notices in both English and Spanish were then mailed to adjacent landowners on May 2, 2023, along with informative flyers. Approximately 3,028 postcards were mailed out using Every Door Direct on May 2, 2023, to mailboxes within the 77583 zip code. Informative flyers were hand-delivered to local community facilities, gathering places, and apartment complexes in the vicinity on May 8, 2023. Notices were also published in the Brazoria Facts on May 8, 2023 and La Vaz de Brazoria County on May 3, 2023 in English and Spanish, respectively. TxDOT advertised the meeting on roadside variable message signs along FM 521 from May 15, 2023 to May 26, 2023. The FM 521 widening project limits begin at County Road 56 and end at FM 1462. The project area is located within Brazoria County, Texas, and the proposed project is approximately 6.4 miles long. 
To provide some background, TechStot began the initial stages of the FM521 project in 2019 by collecting data and reviewing the current roadway conditions. The project team then met with local government officials and interested stakeholders to determine potential engineering constraints, short and long-term project needs, and pre-existing projects that may conflict or integrate with the proposed improvements. From 2021 until now, the project team has been identifying engineering, residential, and commercial constraints that contributed to the development of proposed roadway alternatives for the proposed project. Proposed alternatives being presented at this meeting were developed as potential solutions to improve the existing roadway facility while balancing potential impacts to the environment and community. The proposed project is needed because the current roadway does not meet the current design or safety standards. Additionally, during peak travel times, there is currently heavy traffic along the FM 521 corridor, and as population growth in the region continues, the roadway would not safely accommodate future traffic demand. If existing conditions of the FM 521 project corridor are not improved, it is anticipated that the crash rate would increase over time and congestion and traffic flow would worsen. The purpose of the project is to improve safety and mobility by upgrading the roadway to current TxDOT roadway design standards. Planned improvements call for additional lanes to add capacity, a raised median, and straightening of the road to increase safety along the corridor. Early in the project development process, historical and existing traffic and crash roadway data was gathered to guide the improvement design. Let's discuss the roadway crash data. As a primary purpose of the proposed project, and as part of the effort to improve safety within the project area, the project team analyzed crash history data from the four-year period of 2017 to 2021. During this time frame, the number of crashes increased 59% and were noted as occurring during peak traffic times between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Additionally, the number of crashes along the corridor totaled 131, which is higher than the statewide rate during this time period. Without improvements to the roadway capacity and updates to current design standards, an even greater increase in crashes along this portion of FM 521 is anticipated. The red dotted line on the graph shows an expected increase in total crashes over time without proposed improvements. A closer look at the crash data along FM 521 from the years 2017 to 2021 further identifies several intersections as top crash locations. As shown on the map, multiple crash locations are represented as hotspot crash areas. Color coding is used to show the varying number of crashes with green indicating a low crash density, yellow as moderate, and red as high density. 52% of the crashes analyzed occurred at intersections. The highest concentration of crashes occurred at the County Road 56, Burns Road, and FM 1462 intersections. In addition to the intersection crashes, there were 18 opposite direction crashes and two fatalities identified during this time period throughout the project corridor. To reiterate the need for improved safety in the FM 521 corridor, the incidence of crashes or crash rate in the project area is higher than the statewide average of FM, rural, and urban roads in Texas. The project team proposes that the addition of a raised median and travel lanes would help address the higher than average crash rate in this corridor by reducing congestion as well as vehicle conflict points in the project area. Now, I will give an overview of the description of the proposed project. Proposed improvements for FM 521 include widening the roadway from two to four lanes, the addition of an 18-foot wide raised concrete median, and realignment or straightening of the roadway south of County Road 53. The project would also include the addition of a 10-foot wide shared use path to accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians. Left turn bays would be included in the proposed concrete median at various cross streets and other heavy turn traffic locations. This slide shows an illustration of the existing typical section. A typical section is a representative cross-section of the roadway as it looks today. The existing typical section from County Road 56 to County Road 42 is two lanes, with one lane in each direction and 10-foot-wide outside shoulders. 
there is no median or traffic barrier present. Drainage along the roadway is generally funneled through open ditches. The corridor's average right-of-way width is 100 feet wide and does not include sidewalks. Land use surrounding this section of roadway is primarily agricultural, with limited notable exceptions at County Road 56 and some scattered residential properties. From south of County Road 42 to FM 1462, the roadway widens to four 12-foot wide travel lanes, two in each direction, with one foot wide shoulders. The 100 foot wide typical right of way continues. There is no median or traffic barrier present. Drainage continues to be funneled through open ditches. This section of the road does not currently have sidewalks. Residential and commercial development along the roadway increases moving south, including notable commercial development at FM 1462. Here you can see the proposed typical section for the FM 521 corridor through the entire project limits. The proposed typical section provides a cross section of the roadway as it would look with the proposed improvements. The proposed typical section includes four 12-foot wide lanes, two in each direction, with 12-foot wide shoulders. An 18-foot wide raised concrete medium is also included to effectively channel traffic and improve safety. Left turn bays would be included in the proposed concrete median at various cross streets and other heavy turn traffic locations. A proposed 10-foot wide shared use path on both sides of the roadway would safely accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians. Drainage would be accommodated within drainage ditches. A drainage study is currently being conducted to determine if there is a need for detention ponds or other drainage improvements. This slide shows the schematic or aerial view of the proposed improvements at a preliminary design level. The project engineering team has developed roadway schematics to show three proposed alternatives. Proposed alternatives were developed to minimize the need for additional right-of-way as much as practicable. This slide shows an example of the schematic legend and a snapshot of the schematic that can be found on the meeting webpage. The legend is included on each page of the schematic to reference as you review. The legend shows the colors that are represented in the proposed design. These colors identify each alternative, project limits, and major aspects of the roadway. Alternative A is purple, alternative B is blue, and alternative C is green. To review the schematic designs more closely, please download the project schematic from the meeting webpage. You may then zoom in and out on your location of interest. Please know that the files are quite large and may require more time to download than other project and meeting materials. The proposed alternatives were evaluated based on proposed right-of-way acreage needed as well as various environmental constraints such as waters of the United States, wetlands, floodplains and floodways, potential hazardous materials sites, potential displacements, cultural resources, and environmental justice communities. This evaluation is summarized in the table above for each alternative. The evaluation presented is not comprehensive for all environmental constraints analyzed for NEPA compliance. However, assists the project team to consider, along with public feedback, a proposed alternative to move forward for more detailed environmental analysis. The information presented in this slide is preliminary and subject to change as the schematic and environmental study process is ongoing. The proposed alternatives for the FM 521 project would require right-of-way acquisition. The amount of estimated right-of-way proposed varies between 58 to 66 acres depending on the alternative. Right-of-way amounts are estimates at this time and are subject to final design revision. Information about the right-of-way acquisition process may be found on the text.web webpage at the web address listed on this slide. Information regarding the schedule for acquisition may be obtained by calling TxDOT's right-of-way specialist, Colin Dishman, at 713-802-5407 or visiting with the right-of-way staff at the open house. The project team is identifying and evaluating potential environmental impacts that could occur as a result of constructing the proposed project. Areas that are under review include biological resources, community impacts, environmental justice, water resources, hazardous materials, archaeological resources, historic properties, and traffic noise. The project would be designed to avoid or minimize impacts to the greatest amount practicable. Once completed, 
technical reports documenting the analysis and conclusions of these studies will be available for review upon request. The proposed FM521 roadway widening project is anticipated to cost approximately $57.9 million. Though the project is not currently funded, funding is anticipated with a combination of federal and state support. The estimated project timeline is shown here. After the comment period closes, the project team will review comments received, make appropriate design changes, and prepare official public meeting documentation. Public meeting documentation will be posted to the project meeting webpage when complete. The next steps include recommendation of an alternative and development of environmental documentation, a future public involvement event, and an environmental decision. Detailed design activities, right-of-way acquisition, and project construction would occur after the environmental decision and would be subject to identified funding. Once begun, the project team estimates construction would take approximately one and a half to two years. TxDOT encourages you to review the materials regarding the proposed project and provide feedback. You may submit comments in the following ways. You may download the comment card from the project webpage and email to hou-pio-webmail at text.gov. Fill out the comment card at the open house and drop it in the comment box. Or mail the comment card to the Text. Houston District Office at the address shown on the slide. Comments must be received or postmarked by Friday, June 9, 2023 to be included in the public meeting documentation. Responses to verbal and written comments received during the comment period will be included in the public meeting documentation that will be posted on the project webpage when complete. Please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions. You may contact Jason Holloman at the Text. Houston office by phone at 713-802-5137 or email him at jason.holloman at text.gov. And don't forget to follow us on the Text. Houston District Twitter Facebook, and Instagram pages for ongoing road closures and construction updates. You may click on any of the social media links shown here or on the presentation PDF, which is accessible on the FM521 Project public meeting page at the link provided on the screen. November 7, 2000 was the last deathless day on roadways in Texas. That means for nearly 22 years, at least one person has died every single day on a Texas roadway. This message is a reminder to end the streak of deaths on Texas highways. We need drivers and passengers to act responsibly and help reach the goal of zero deaths on Texas highways by 2050. Texans can play a crucial role in ending fatal crashes with a few safe driving habits. Wear seat belts, drive the speed limit, put away the phone and other distractions, and never drive under the influence of alcohol or drugs. So please, do your part and share this message with your friends and family. Thank you for participating in this public meeting. Please remember to submit your comments no later than Friday, June 9, 2023 to be included in the public involvement process.